If you're suspecting car prices to drop after semiconductor chip supplies will get back to normal, there's yet another thing coming. Today, we're looking at how car makers are facing rising costs without Russian metal supplies and the power that China has too. Metals haven't been a target of Western sanctions yet, but some suppliers are already steering clear of Russian goods. Many people don't know this, but some 40% of the metal materials used by car makers come from Russian companies. I'm talking about palladium, nickel, and other materials. Did you know that Russia is the world's largest producer of palladium? Palladium is a key component of catalytic converters in all combustion engine cars. It's also used in anti-pollution systems. At the beginning of March, the price of palladium was $2,589 an ounce. By March 10th, price has soared to $3,084 per ounce. Russia is also the world's largest producer of nickel. Nickel is a metal that is critical to EV batteries. On March 7th, the price of nickel skyrocketed more than 132% compared to last year. It was almost $43,000 per metric ton. Just one day later, it doubled to $100,000 per metric ton. This caused the London Metal Exchange to suspend trading for the rest of the day to suspend market panic. Take a guess at how much nickels in an EV battery. Well, it used to be that about 60% of an EV battery was nickel, but in recent years, global automakers increased the percentage of nickel in cathodes. Reason was to enhance EV batteries' energy density so that vehicles could drive for longer distances. But since last summer in Korea, some companies have been manufacturing batteries containing up to 90% nickel, so this price surge is a huge blow to the global car industry. Batteries are one of the most expensive components of an electric vehicle. In recent in years, automakers have been expecting batteries to become cheaper and therefore drive down the price of electric vehicles and make them more affordable. But right now, these soaring metal prices makes this no longer realistic, at least not in the near future. The war is also impacting the price of other metals. Take aluminum, for example, which is used heavily in car bodies and engines. The last four months, the price of aluminum has seen a 60% rise. And don't forget rising energy bills. So you can see how all of this is adding more pressure to car makers. They cannot avoid this impacting their business models. So if you've been saving up for a new ride, just know the prices aren't expected to lower anytime soon. But actually, it's quite the opposite. At the end of the day, it's you, the consumer and driver, who will feel the pain. Right now, the car assembly lines are going quiet across Europe, especially in countries like Germany, Britain, and Austria. Here's the reason why. Months ago, China and Russia declared a partnership without limits. Then Russia invaded Ukraine. Now the world is waiting to see what position China will take. You can't ignore China. In fact, China is a hot topic right now. The reason is because in recent years, more companies in the automobile industry have become increasingly dependent on China. But this dependence puts the car industry in a vulnerable position. Many people know that China and Russia are friends. This has put a real strain on relations between Beijing and the U.S. and between Beijing and Europe. Did you know that China is the world's largest and fastest growing car market? And it's a critical source for revenue for many large automakers. And that even includes U.S. companies like GM and Tesla. Many people don't know that Volkswagen sells more than half its cars in China. And China accounts for around one-third of the sales of Mercedes, Benz, and BMW. China has also become a crucial supplier for the electric vehicle industry, and even battery manufacturers in general. This is because China is an extremely important source of refined lithium. Refined lithium is what's needed to make car batteries for lithium-powered battery electric vehicles. But it's not just about supplies. It's also about transportation. Many people don't know this, but the current war is interfering with air freight and rail traffic on the Trans-Siberian Railway, which is being used by German car makers to supply parts to factories in China. All in all, you can see why all eyes are on China now. You can only imagine China strategizing which cards to play. They have the U.S. and the West on one side versus Russia on the other. They've been playing both sides until now gingerly. Which position will they maintain? Let's go back to Russia. Would it surprise you to hear that Russia makes up less than 2% of German car sales? But it wasn't always that way. At one time, German car makers saw Russia as a huge growth potential in the car market. One major reason is that Russia is a member of BRIC. BRIC stands for Brazil, Russia, India, and China. It's a group of developing countries that are at a similar stage towards being an economically developed country. Despite Russia's BRIC membership, German car makers quickly abandoned Russia just weeks ago after Russian President Vladimir Putin sent his tanks into Ukraine. Volkswagen halted production of their facilities in Russia, and they suspended exports of all vehicles indefinitely, projecting extensive interruption of business activities. Volkswagen 
Reagan even suspended production at its main German plant in Wolfsburg. It also suspended production at other locations, including a factory in Zwickau, which produces EVs. And now this is impacting the U.S. too. That's because Volkswagen's Zwickau factory exports ID.4 SUVs to the U.S., or at least they used to. BMW and Mercedes-Benz had limited manufacturing in Russia, but both announced that they will halt manufacturing and exports to Russia too. BMW also shut down several factories in Germany, Austria, and Britain. They're all shut down because of parts shortages. BMW also partially paused production of its main Munich plant. Porsche idled one of their factories in Leipzig. This is the factory that makes the Cayenne sports utility vehicles. Now, did you know that the biggest foreign car maker in Russia is the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance? Last year in 2021, they sold more than half a million vehicles in Russia. They did that in a joint venture with the Russian car maker Avtovaz. In the first week of March, Renault's shares fell 17%, but they haven't said anything yet about what they're planning to do to fix it in Russia, if at all. But it's not just about European factories shutting down or suspending production. Right now, there's an even more immediate problem facing car makers across Europe. Western Ukraine was responsible for supplying wiring systems for these car makers. But now, due to the war, the supply of wiring systems has been cut off completely. To make matters worse, these supply chains were already very strained because of the shortage of the semiconductors and other parts. Ukraine was a popular place to manufacture these systems to connect electronic components, like entertainment systems or taillights inside a car. Ukraine is a major source of neon, a gas that's used for high-performance lasers. These lasers are required for the production of semiconductors. Why was Ukraine such a popular choice for automakers? To assemble these systems, it's done mainly by hand. They needed a large number of skilled workers to do it. Ukraine was perfect for that. This is because labor in Ukraine isn't very expensive, and the Ukrainian workforce is well-educated. Another bonus was how close Ukraine is to European car factories. Automotive suppliers like Leone have operations in western Ukraine, and this part of the country is only a 12-hour drive to the BMW factories in Bavaria. Now, all production activities have stopped in Ukraine. Wiring systems are usually tailor-made to specific vehicles. No car can operate without them, and these wiring harnesses are some of the first components to be installed in the new vehicle. So, if they can't be supplied, the car assembly line cannot proceed. The global car industry is already feeling the impact. Now, car companies are being put in a vulnerable position due to most automakers source their suppliers from all over the world, not just within their home country. The top automakers also employ millions of international employees. The pandemic was already a hard blow to the industry. Analysts believe the safest bet is to manufacture close to home. This lowers the risk of disruption for supplies and production. This might surprise you, but actually many analysts were already expecting a fundamental reordering of the global economy. Many believe that the Russian-Ukraine war will only accelerate this reordering. So it'll come sooner than we thought. Many analysts expect a deep recession that'll completely tank new car sales for months or possibly even years. Others are more optimistic. The German Association of the Automotive Industry issued their own warning for car makers. They warned about impact to supplies of raw materials from Russia. Supplies and materials that car makers need, like nickel. It's essential for electric car batteries and palladium. Because the prices of metals rising, the price of new cars in the U.S. is also expected to decline by thousands of dollars. But it's not like automakers are completely inexperienced and unprepared. Just think of the pandemic. The pandemic gave automakers a major round of practice in dealing with logistical chaos. Now that Ukraine is currently out of picture as a source for wiring systems, companies are looking for alternatives. One of the potential countries right now is Tunisia. But switching to alternative sources of wiring systems won't take just a few days. Instead, the transition could take anywhere from two to four weeks. But finding an alternative supplier of wiring systems is not the biggest problem on automakers' minds. It's international trade. Actually, this is a fear for all European companies in general, not just automakers. If international trade gets damaged, there will be severe consequences for Europe and the world. Right now, exchange of goods and services across borders makes up 86% of the GDP of the European Union. In the U.S. economy, it makes up 23%. And currently, Russian oil sales have been slowing down to an almost complete stop internationally. So what does the future hold? Experts believe that it all depends on what China does. If NATO members impose an embargo, China is expected to buy more oil and coal from Russia. This is because the global imposed sanctions on imported Russian oil has affected many refiners, shippers, and other companies. But if China decides to buy more oil from Russia, it will fill the massive hole left from the German automaker's halt in Russia. But it's all still up in the air. Experts still aren't sure whether China will end up buying more from Russia anyway. It could all 
I'll just be one big panic for nothing. One Belgian researcher mentioned that right now China is very intertwined economically with the West. And so, whether or not China moves to support Russia in this way is still to be determined. German car makers and U.S. based companies like GM and Tesla have a lot invested in China. But so far, none of these companies have mentioned pulling back from China, yet they are hoping that market forces will determine their future. And I don't mean geopolitics, but I'm talking about customers. In the end, the customers will decide. The future is unclear for now, but one thing for certain is that everyone has seen clearly the huge impact and risks of doing business with an authoritarian country in general and depending on others for supplies. But now you tell me, how long do you think it'll be before the costs for car makers will come back down to normal? Do you think that'll ever happen? Do you think that the car industry is becoming overly dependent on China? If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.